was the last male of his kind. I have a kind? The only other blue macaw is in Rio de Janeiro. Brazil? <laughs> On one hand, um, like having these films that are a little anthropomorphized or slightly more sensational, get people to realize like, oh, maybe I've never heard of the Spix's macaw before. And after you watch the movie, you might go onto Google and be like, what is the Spix's macaw? Who are they? And like prompt people to be more curious about different species or animals or habitats they've never heard of before. But on the other hand, I think there's a tendency to also like, I guess, flatten these conservation issues and not fully address the nuance. And so I think one of the things that happened with Rio is that the Spix's macaw was endangered, but afterwards people really increased the demand for captive Spix's macaws, which now it is extinct in the wild. So there's like sort of a double edge that on one hand, people realize more about a certain species, but on the other hand, it can also contribute to conservation issues. You know, both films uh, are set in, 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 in this area and Rio 2 in particular has like the macaws kind of defending their territory uh, from illegal logging or destruction of habitat. And on one hand, like that's a, I think a, a good message. On the other hand, it was kind of frustrating that the humans that were there were the ones that were cutting down the forest and it kind of erased all the indigenous peoples that have been living in that area and sustainably in that area and with these non-human animals for millennia and for, you know, for such a long time. And so I think that, you know, on one hand it does represent Latin America in some ways, but it's kind of maybe the, the nationalist, stereotypical things you expect from Brazil, and it doesn't show maybe the other more complicated nuances. You know, there's some elements there, but then they're also flattening other social issues too, it seems. So it's complicated. Yeah.